Today, I'm bringing you the making of my 3D printed LED water bottle holder for my BMW 530i. Here's my water bottle, and this is the 3D printed uh, water bottle holder. As you see, it goes right in. Here's a remote for the LED lights. I can power it on, and I can also change the color at a click of a button. I'm gonna be breaking down the entire design, 3D modeling, and 3D printing process, and show you how a free photogrammetry app actually made this project possible. All that in the video coming up. What's going on YouTube? This is JL Musi and welcome to the making of my 3D printed LED water bottle holder for my BMW 5 Series. For any product that is created, usually there is a need in the market for that. I'm always carrying large water bottles throughout the day, always hydrating throughout the day, and these larger water bottles would not fit in my 530i. It wouldn't fit in the center console, it wouldn't fit in the side cup holders, and anytime that I would put it on the ground, it would constantly roll over as I was driving. So I definitely had a need for a product like this. I tried looking online and I didn't find anything. On top of that, I wanted to design a water bottle holder that actually went with the adjustable LED lights that I have in the interior of my vehicle. So since this product did not exist in the market, I set out to create my own. A company called Ubiquity 6, makers of a photogrammetry app called Displayland, actually reached out to me and wanted me to create a sponsored video. So full disclosure guys, this is actually my first uh, sponsored video working with the company, but it was actually a perfect fit with the projects that I have been making. If you've been following some of the 3D printed armor that I have been creating, uh, I actually have worked with Scandata in the past. The way that I acquired the Scandata is I went to a studio with a large complex rig of cameras and I actually had to pay to get the scan data professionally done and the process of time for that data was actually a couple of hours. So taking my vehicle just to scan the center console wouldn't have been the most practical in this scenario and the app really allowed me to just scan part of the center console and actually have great reference to create this model from. So I downloaded Displayland for free on my phone, got inside my vehicle and started capturing the center console. All you have to do to capture an object is go around in a circular motion trying to capture as many different angles. It does have some best practices like having nice even lighting and also avoiding very reflective materials. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward, intuitive, and it actually takes the photogrammetry data and converts it into a 3D model fairly quick. Once the photogrammetry data is processed and uploaded into Displayland, you have a couple options. You can share with the world or make your scan private. You can see what other people are scanning as well. And for my case, what I did is actually export this as an OBJ. And the nice feature about this is that not only do you get the OBJ, but you actually get some auto UVs and you get a texture map that you can download as well. While the scan data was fairly accurate, I still did have to take some measurements of the center console of the cup holder since that was going to be the main attachment point uh, to the water bottle holder. Uh, from there, I imported the model into Maya and it was pretty much just uh, rotated in the local coordinate. So I did straighten it out to fit world transforms and I deleted all the extra fluff, all the extra parts, and just mainly kept the center console. From there, I applied a basic material and connected the auto-generated texture that DisplayLand provides for you. This is where I made a bit of a pivot as far as my 3D modeling package of choice. I usually model in uh, Maya and I have for 3D printing before, but I wanted something that was quick, simple, and I've been playing around with a package called Moai 3D that really lends itself well for creating product designs like this. So I imported the scan data into Moai 3D and the first section of the bottle holder that I decided to tackle was the top ring of the design. Uh, this seemed pretty straightforward as I basically I just needed the diameter of the water bottle holder and a top ring to actually support it. 
and stop it from tipping over. And this was gonna lay down the uh, groundwork for the design of the bottom ring, which is actually gonna support the weight of the bottle and uh, some aesthetic choices throughout the design. The first thing that I wanted to figure out is how thick this initial ring should be and how uh, tight it should actually be against the bottle. So I decided to uh, print just a basic volume of the shape and see how it was going to line up and fit with the water bottle. I decided to go a little bit thinner on that initial ring and my next point of focus was to actually hollow out uh, the ring to be able to pass the LED lights through. I also had to focus on creating the cutout windows that were going to let the uh, light uh, out of the ring as well as the lid. So I 3D printed out that first test ring and I wanted to put the LED lights in there, see how it was gonna coil through, uh, see how the lid was gonna snap on, and also see how it was gonna look with the LED lights actually shining from within it. The next 3D modeling task was to create the bottom ring. It was gonna be pretty much similar to the top ring, except that at the bottom, you had a X uh, shape uh, bracket that was gonna stop the bottle from actually falling all the way through. So I did a test print of the bottom ring with the attached column and I hit my first major roadblock. Even though the uh, bottom ring supported the uh, weight of the bottle well, uh, I did have a problem passing the LED strips through that 90 degree uh, bend uh, that was created from the ring and that column going upwards. With some pliers, I did try to force it through but unfortunately it ended up damaged the LED strip. So it was back to the drawing board for the bottom ring. From that point, I knew that I was gonna split up the model into more pieces. That way I didn't have any hard 90 degree angles that the uh, LED strips would be hard to pass through. Uh, once I wrapped up the bottom ring, I moved on to the arm that connected the two rings onto the actual battery box. So I split the connecting arm into two pieces and I actually created uh, some keys in the bottom. That way I could lay these down flat in the print bed, yet still have some uh, nice uh, pegs that I'll be able to snap into once putting this together. From there, I moved on to the battery box, which was gonna sit pretty much at the top of the cup holder. And this was just gonna hold the batteries uh, for the LED lights. And last but not least, I had to design the cup insert. And this was one of the most important parts as it had to fit securely to hold the weight of the bottle holder itself. Even though this was one of the simpler shapes, it was one of the trickier ones to get down perfectly right. And that's because the cup holder on this vehicle actually had two different radiuses. So it was a lot thinner at the bottom and then it pretty much flared out towards the top. It did take me a couple of test prints just to get the perfect sizing for the cup insert, but once I nailed it down, I knew that this bottle holder would be secure. So with countless hours of 3D modeling, 3D printing, revisions in between, and too many trips to my vehicle to keep track of, I was finally done with all the 3D printed files. So with the 3D model complete, I sliced the model and sent it to Idea Maker, which is my slicing software. Slicing is the process of taking a 3D model and converting it to a 3D printable file that the 3D printer can read. I also laid down supports to areas that needed it since uh, 3D printers can't print on thin air and it's a layer by layer process. Some areas do have to be supported to be able to print properly. So I sent all the final files to my printer where I let my Raise 3D N2 Plus do the rest of the work. It took me a couple days just to print all the final versions. So with the last piece completed and the 3D printing process done, it was time to take that last piece out of the bed, remove the raft, and clean up any remaining supports. Removing the support material is a pretty straightforward process, but you do have to be careful not to actually break the print. Power tip number one is always, always remember to clean up your 3D printed supports off the ground. If not, it will come back and bite you.
with all the 3D printed pieces cleaned up and the supports and rafts removed, it was time to start the gluing process. First, I went ahead and scuffed up each surface that was to be glued and joined with a rough 100 grit sandpaper so the glue could actually bond to each surface a lot better. I started running the LED strips through each section of the bottle holder, removing the adhesive strip and actually adhering it to the inner ring. The first section that I completed was the top ring and I glued that to the uh, bracket arm. Uh, then I went ahead and clamped those for about two hours and moved on to the next section. Next, it was time to glue the bracket arm with one side leading into the battery and the battery box and the other led the LED strip to the bottom ring where it would take the last loop and finally end there. I had to use pliers to get each of the pegs to snap into place and I also had to put quite a bit of force into getting the top and the lower sections of the bracket arm to snap together and finally glue. The glue that I'm using here is called Instacure and does a really good job of bonding these prints together. I repeated the process of passing LED strips and wires throughout the model, gluing, clamping down for a couple of hours until the rest of the bottle holder was complete. So with the water bottle holder fully complete, it was time to put it to the test and fill up the water bottle with water and see if it actually would hold up in the vehicle. So this leads us to power tip number two, never, never, never fill up your water bottle while distracted by your mobile device. And now for the defining moment, crunch time, the point of no return, the moment of truth. All right, I'll shut up and put the bottle holder inside the cup holder, see if it holds. So far, so good. And now comes the water bottle. And what do you know? It actually holds up. All right, to run a quick test of the lights on the water bottle holder, and everything looks good. And finally, I'll go ahead and sync up the lights from my interior to the lights of the water bottle holder. And I'll go ahead and play around with a couple of different matching color schemes. Thank you so much for watching the breakdown of this 3D printed water bottle holder. As usual, let me know how I did in the comment section down below. Please subscribe to the channel to see more cool 3D printed projects like this. And make sure to download the Displayland app for free using the link down below. I'm super pumped to see what you guys actually scan. Until we meet again, folks, I will catch you next time.